welcome to the Ferdinand Bethieu booth uh, at Basel 2019. Uh, we're here to see a new watch actually, based off of one of uh, Carl Frederick's uh, new acquisitions, I understand. Yes, absolutely. Uh, would you tell us a little about this? Yes, this is something very rare. It's a cycle of reflection. It was used in the 18th century, early in uh, 18th century, to calculate the position, uh, the longitude at night by the, uh, the position, of, position the of the moon. Voilà. So it's a very rare object that has um, inspired the design of the new watch that we uh, have introduced during uh, Basel World. And uh, I, I suppose to take the, this concept and to miniaturize that on a wristwatch must have been a yes, challenge. Yes, absolutely. It was very complicated. And this is more the source of inspiration regarding the design of the watch. Uh, Voilà, to, to have uh, something really uh, that has the same uh, different elements uh, represented on the door, on the watch. How old <laughs> would you say this is? Uh, this is from the wow. Well, this is this is from uh, 70, uh, 72. Uh, it's a very early production made by the astronomer German astronomer that is called Schwartz. That was uh, that changed his name to Le Noir in Paris. Uh, that make this tool together with Borda, that is the mathematician and physician that uh, was deeply involved in the metrical system. So it's a very important uh, astronomic tool. Sure, uh, it's also a very important. A, yeah. man. So he's given us, a, given us a mathematical language that we exactly very that we are still in use that yeah. we still use today. Uh, maybe we can get to the watches yes, right now. Uh, Please. <coughs> Ah, so there are two versions of the watches, I see. Yes, so we have two watches. One is the uh, light color, that is the near side of the moon. And the other one that has a dark color is the far side of the moon. Uh, they, they work in pair. Uh, so um, they are both 10-piece limited editions. Uh, and uh, they present a very unique display of uh, the age of the moon using a complex device, uh, a cam and a filler spindle that follows the shape of the cam and indicates with this large uh, hand the days from the new moon to the full moon and back and forth constantly uh, in a very fluid uh, movement. And there is an extra scale uh, along with, uh, with the state of the moon, I see. Yes, exactly. To, to know, uh, to de define if you are in the, if the hand shows the waxing moon or the waning moon, you have to look at this index at four here that uh, shows you the position if you are after or before the full moon. So it's a very easy watch to, uh, to adjust thanks to a lateral selector that allows to adjust all the hour or the moon without the watch stopping running. So we never use the accuracy, wow. uh, ne neither for the moon phase, neither for uh, the, the hour. So I will put my selector to adjust the moon, pull out the crown, and I can move the hand to the position of the moon corresponding to the exact date and hour uh, of the day. So then the, I will uh, close the selector to to the neutral position, pull out the crawl, and as you noticed, uh, the watch don't stop running during the adjustment and don't lose its accuracy. Even during the adjustment of the hour minute, I put my selector in the other position, pull out the crawl. It will not affect the moon uh, function. It will keep on running, and during the adjustment of the hour and minute the tourbillon that is below the central hand will not stop running not so that we don't lose uh, accuracy. So it's a very simple device uh, to indicate something that is not very uh, uh, usual because the display of the age of the moon is something quite uh, special. <coughs> Inspired by the work made by Ferdinand Bertout, he is the one <coughs> that created the first uh, equation of time using a cam and a filo spindle. And we have translated this uh, creation uh, from Ferdinand Bertou, not to just indicate uh, the equation of time, but to indicate another important function for Ferdinand Bertou, the positioning of the moon and the exact and accurate positioning of the moon. 
It's a very, very interesting complication. I don't think yes, uh, it's it's, a, it's very common in no, any way. It's, it's <laughs> an astronomy complication, but finally, it's also a very natural way of s s having the calculation, a uh, very simple calculation of the position of the moon. So you can really follow day after day when the next full moon is coming uh, uh, and the new moon. So it's a very natural tool. Uh, on top of that extremely accurate because if the watch keep on running you need uh, to adjust this moon uh, uh, device only one day every 577 years so we talk about a really accurate uh, age of the moon it's display. A very, it's a very precision instrument. Yes. Uh, and now tell us about, a little about the other version of the watch. So, so the dark side of the, the dark moon. side of the moon has is there, the same is there complication. A, is there a is there a difference in the way that they give the uh, information? No, so the information is absolutely. Does the wearer have to buy both one. watches? No, no. <laughs> it's the same information, but it's the color, of course, that is very different. Here we have. Uh, a, a central caseband crafted in white gold material but that has been sandblasted because we talk about the invisible side of the moon also the crown is sandblasted in white gold and the case back the screw the screwing case back has been also sandblasted it's all white gold to weight to give weight to the to the watch the rest of the elements the lugs and the uh, lateral elements are crafted in ceramized titanium that reach a hardness of 1200 vikers they are extremely difficult to scratch and all the color of course uh, <coughs> feature the invisible side of the moon uh, that is very dark and here on the small index at four has been uh, engraved by laser three-dimensional laser process uh, the exact picture of the moon taken by uh, the apollo 11 mission uh, the very first picture that the man, the human being, could take uh, from the moon, from the invisible side of the moon. Well, that's fantastic considering the Apollo 11 mission celebrates its 50th anniversary yeah, this year. Yes, you're right. <laughs> uh, maybe just before we end, and just because the plexiglass uh, version of the complication is on the table, yes. maybe we can have a look at how it actually functions. Yes, it's very easy. So you have the cam that is uh, uh, making the, the that is uh, way, uh, the periphery of the dial and this spill of findle uh, that follows the shape of the cam uh, very easily and when it comes to the new ah, so this is on the side it. of the case voilà, right. exactly it's on the side of the case you you only see a small portion of this mm -hmm. cam <coughs> at four um, to make uh, to have also the display of the second in a more uh, accurate way, so we cover the second just to and let only the opening uh, at this place uh, to to uh, give the indication of the waxing or waning uh, position of the moon. So it looks very simple, and it's a real <laughs> reinterpretation of a very old de mechanism developed by Bertou uh, to indicate a, an important function with. A, a display here that is typical from Bertou on his wall clock. Uh, he was using this display to display the age of the moon himself because he usually puts the moon phases and the display of the moon. That's something that we really uh, take direct from direct inspiration from his work to this very unusual watch. <laughs> Well, no, that's a, it's a fantastic uh, watch, uh, keeping the original K-shape and everything, uh, the manner in which uh, the brand keeps uh, introducing new sort of uh, complications into uh, the entire endeavor is, is truly testament to uh, even Ferdinand Berthieu's uh, <laughs> legacy. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much you for so your much. time. Thank you. Thank you.